outside so I didn't see anything the other day and since then it has rained a lot it's all flooded out here I had to work last night so pretty tired today I probably should have grabbed the 300 wind mag but I didn't using the 12 gauge because I wanted to keep it lightweight this morning. It's not extremely cold out here. But it is wet and it's windy so I don't really want to sit up in the tree stand. So I'm just going to find a nice little thick spot on the ground and sit down and hunt for a couple hours and hope for the best. You see my awesome camo I'm wearing today which is just orange and uh, yeah, blue jeans. We got out here as quick as I could. The sun is just now peeking up over the horizon. You guys ain't gonna see me pass up too many deer. <laughs> yeah. There wouldn't have been anything wrong with shooting that doe. I mean, we can get three of them a day. It's not like there isn't more where that came from. Honestly, the only reason why I passed it up was pride. I didn't want to feel like everything I got this year was, you know, six months old or less. <laughs> and now that I think about it, pride ain't gonna fill the freezer, will it? So probably should have taken it. But oh well. I think we can do a little bit better. It's just a matter of time. Let's get moving. You guys like my awesome camera lighting here? <laughs> All right. So once again, it's the wee hours in the morning and I'm planning out my hunt for the day. And I think I'm gonna stick with the same plan that I had the other day using the 300 Winchester Magnum from the tree stand. That seemed to be a pretty good combination there. I'm overlooking a pretty wide area. I should have a good opportunity for success. Even sitting on the ground, I know I've been amongst the deer pretty much every day. There's been deer around me. It's just getting one to slip up and give me a shot. 
<clears throat> now yesterday I did have one that actually walked in and gave me every opportunity for a shot. It was just a really small doe and I was a little bit conflicted on taking another one that was that small. Um, I took that deer's sister during muzzleloader season. Um, but now we've got two deer in the freezer. I think we can be a little bit more selective than that. So there's nothing wrong with taking it. I just didn't feel like it. So <laughs> anyways, there's another deer that I did pass up as well for about the same reasons that you guys didn't see. That was a little six point buck. You guys didn't see him because I couldn't get any footage. The reason why that is is, uh, well, let me tell you the story here. So I, I went down to my shooting range to, to zero in my rifle, uh, one of my rifles the other day, and I noticed that there was a fresh scrape on the range <laughs> at about the 80-yard mark there. And I'm like, oh, boy, this buck is just asking for it here, putting it right on my shooting range. <laughs> so uh, I freshened up the, the scrape myself, and I knew... That was going to really intrigue that buck, and he was probably going to come back the following afternoon. So I was there the following afternoon, set up on the ground behind some scrubby little oak trees that were about head high. And uh, I had the camera set up, and I was messing with the camera, trying to get it to focus on the area where the scrape was. And there was one twig that was in the way that was preventing the camera from being able to focus on anything. So after messing with it for a few minutes, I decided I was just going to break that, that little twig that was keeping it from focusing on the area that I needed. So I raised up in, in my seat and I reached over and I broke that twig. And when I did, I looked up and that buck was standing right out in the middle of the range looking at me. <laughs> now, he still didn't get a real good look at me because I had some good little cover in the way, these little scrubby oak trees there. Uh, but he knew something wasn't right and he heard that twig snap and that's what caught his attention. I did have time to reach behind me, grab the rifle, get the crosshairs on him, and I got a good look at him, and he's a six-point that I've seen on camera a few times. Um, I went ahead and passed him up because I only have one buck tag left, and we've got one meat buck that's in the freezer already. So, again, I think we can be a little bit more selective, at least right now. Now, we get towards the end of the season, if we hadn't had any more success, uh, both those deer are probably going to be in trouble. <laughs> Uh, but as it stands right now, we're not hurting for meat. Uh, we can, we can uh, go with what we want. So, anyways, uh, I think it's about time to pack everything up here and uh, head back out. Huh? I had no idea my camera could zoom in so well. Why can't it zoom in like that on deer? Alright, let's get out to the tree stand. There's a neighbor's house. All ready for Christmas.
can't tell if that's a button head or a doe. It's pretty far away. I can tell it's a young deer. If it was in range, it might be in trouble if it's a doe. Definitely a button head. All right, so. Just to recap what happened this morning, it was a great morning out there as far as seeing deer goes. However, we managed to find about the only three deer in Tennessee that I'm willing to pass up on. So I started out with a small buck. Uh, that could be the one that I passed up last week. I'm not sure I'm gonna have to really look at that footage a lot better. Uh, normally that buck would be in a lot of trouble, especially since I had him on camera, I had good footage and everything. Um, but he gets a pass today mainly because I only have one buck tag left for the entire season and I didn't want to burn my last buck tag before I had a chance to go out to the deer camp again I'm supposed to head back out to the deer camp later on this week so he got a pass today but next week he may be in trouble <laughs> and then I saw that doe that I passed up yesterday again I actually spooked her a little bit she saw me moving around moving the gun around which I mean she was only like 12 yards away but then yesterday she was even closer and I was on the ground and she didn't see me so you know win some you lose some <laughs> but I didn't shoot her again uh, mainly because I was looking at another deer off to my right and had a much larger body size than her and I couldn't determine if it was a doe or a button head until I'd stared at that thing for a good hour and a half. That deer stayed out there for two hours and didn't go 100 yards. And it turned out it was a button head. So that was the kind of button head that would fool a guy because the little nubs went straight back. And you couldn't see it until, uh, until he got his ears just in the right position and the sunshine just right on his head and the planets and stars aligned and everything else so I'm not gonna pass on a I don't know what that was a four or six point buck or something like that and then shoot a button head yeah. right, we're getting ready to head out to the Christmas parade <laughs> we parks this night we have the peppermint hot chocolate which gets little 
shop pieces of paint paint on top of it, and then we also have the Silver Bell Latte, which is white chocolate, and coconut mint top with dark chocolate toasted coconut pieces. Okay, I want the silver bales, a medium, please. And would you like it hot? Yes, please. Uh, a medium hot silver bales, will that be all for you? Yes. Thank you. So we are on the way to go see a Christmas parade. We gotta get coffee first. <laughs> silver bells coffee. <laughs> Okay. 